Hi, everyone. I want to thank Komen for inviting me to discuss uh, today some of the advances that we have in HER2 positive breast cancer. Uh, my name is Elias Fabid. I'm a breast medical oncologist at Fox Chase Cancer Center. I specialize both in breast cancer as well as in cancer genetics and cancer risk. Uh, so we'll move on to our slides uh, just uh, uh, to disclose some of my uh, funding and support uh, for my research. And I will just want to just go over the slide. I know it's a little bit busy, but I would uh, want you to take a look at how we used to look at breast cancer uh, back in the 20th century and over till now. So in the 20th century, everything was just lumped under breast cancer. That was it. Then in the 1970s, uh, researchers and scientists and physicians who treat breast cancer were able to realize that some of the breast cancers uh, are hormone responsive and they called them hormone receptor positive. And everything else was called uh, hormone receptor negative breast cancer. Then in the 90s, uh, another type of breast cancer was discovered and that was the HER2 positive uh, breast cancer. So that's when researchers uh, you know, started to uh, uh, put uh, or lump breast cancer as either HER2 positive or HER2 negative. And there was no treatment uh, at the time yet until it was in the 2000 uh, or maybe late 1990s that treatment that this particular for HER2 positive breast cancer was available. And of course, later on, we started to understand more about the, the, the different even subtypes uh, of breast cancer. And we don't need to go over that because really this is still not clinically available for any uh, particular clinical use. So, uh, so what's HER2 positive breast cancer? It is, you know, as I mentioned, breast cancer is not one uh, disease. It is, yes, it originates in the breast, but there are different types of breast cancer. And we, that's why we, we say it's a heterogeneous disease. And we know that HER2 positive breast cancer is one of those breast cancers that respond to targeted therapy. And we know that targeted therapy works for it. And there is a clinical classification uh, that is based on the HER2 molecule. And the HER2 molecule, it's a protein on the surface of the cells. And it tells the cells to keep on dividing and to divide rapidly. That's why when we diagnose the HER2 positive breast cancer, we want to start treatment, not necessarily immediately, but we don't want to wait too long because we know that this cancer is not waiting and those cells are continuously getting the signal to divide and replicate and then potentially go somewhere else. But the good news is now we have targeted treatment that really works. So how much of or how many of breast uh, cancers are HER2 positive? We know that of all breast cancers, about 20%, I think in some population, maybe a little bit more, uh, are HER2 positive breast cancers. HER2 uh, targeted treatment usually comes alongside chemotherapy. So it's a biologic drug. Uh, some of you have heard about it called Herceptin or Trastuzumab, the generic name. And it usually is given along with chemotherapy, at least initially. And up to 70% of metastatic breast cancer that is HER2 positive, even when it is metastatic, they do have a good response to treatment. So that is also good news. And, and the median overall survival for metastatic HER2 positive breast cancer can be more than 56 months. So if you do the math, it's almost five years. That's just on average how, how long patients with metastatic HER2 positive breast cancer would live. And this is really has changed in the last five to seven years. And I'll take you through the timeline of all of that in the next slide. So in this slide, um, you know, I have different uh, things uh, here, but we're going to go over this in details and in time points. So you can see here, this is MBC, which is metastatic breast cancer. And this is EBC, which is early stage breast cancer. And you can see here that in 1998 is the first discovery that a drug, Herceptin or Trastuzumab, the generic, was discovered and it works for this particular type of breast cancer that at the time it was metastatic breast cancer that's HER2 positive where this treatment was used. So why was given initially for metastatic breast cancer? Because in development of any treatment for cancer, the first 
uh, testing usually is in metastatic disease. And then later on, they move the drug when it's promising and it's showing good results to the early stage of, of the disease. So initially, it was in 1998 that the first trial showed that there is potential. And basically, we can see in the next you know, uh, slides that you know, in 2001, when it became really available that actually metastatic HER2 positive breast cancer would need to be treated with HER2 targeted treatment, which at the time was only one, trastuzumab, um, along with chemotherapy. So what's so special about trastuzumab? So with this, I know it's very confusing. So those, but I'm gonna, you know, guide you through this. So what you see here, this is the cell membrane and here is the HER2 molecule. I mentioned it's a, it's a protein in the cell membrane. So part of the protein is outside the cell and part of the protein is actually inside the cell. So this is, so below is inside the cell and anything outside here, so up you know, uh, on the slide is outside the cell. So trastuzumab, which is the antibody, it's a biologic drug, drug it targets the outside molecule or the outside part of the mem of the protein that is uh, sitting in the membrane of the cell okay so you can see the, uh, the the antibody looks like a y like the 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 you know in the alphabet y so and those two arms of that uh, 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 antibody would attach itself to the outside of that protein which is the her2 uh, and attached to it. And we will go over this in a little bit later on details. So these are what we call targeted monoclonal antibodies or MABS. And there are other molecules that target this and they go from inside the cell. And those are what we call tyrosine kinase inhibitors. So they go and attach themselves to the inner part of uh, the protein from inside the membrane. Those are small molecules so they if even if we give them orally they are able to uh, go inside the membrane and into the other side into the cell uh, from within and uh, there are other targeted treatment i'm going to go over those later on there are targeted antibody drug conjugates uh, and i'll tell you later on what those means but let's start with how does trastuzumab work so i think when it first got discovered everybody was thinking that as a antibody, it's gonna attach itself to the HER2 molecule and it would stop it from working. And that is true. But later on, it was actually uh, discovered that not only does it work by stopping the mechanism of how that uh, membrane protein works, but also it makes some of the immune cells in the tumor microenvironment uh, work against the cancer cells. So that's actually a two, uh, two ways for this uh, antibody to work. So it stops the membrane protein from uh, uh, giving the signal into the cell. So this is one. And two, it would affect some of the tumor immune cells, making them a little bit more active so that they can also help in killing the cancer cells. So really, this is one way why this is a very successful drug. And this is probably one of the reasons why it's also important to give it not just alone, but also with chemotherapy so that it stimulates this immune response within the tumor. So uh, this is a busy slide, but I just wanna show you that multiple different trials showed that what we call the overall survival got better as well as the progression-free survival, meaning how long we can put a pause on the growth of the cancer when it is metastatic. Uh, you know, when we give uh, trastuzumab or Herceptin along with chemotherapy in multiple ways, multiple different combinations, it all worked. And you can see that the, the curves separate, meaning one is better than the other. And you can see that patients would look, would live many months longer and actually have a longer survival when this treatment is given to them. So, so this is 1998 up until 2001, and that's when it became available, and all patients with HER2 positive metastatic breast cancer were able to get that drug. What happened later on is that we realized that, yes, it also improves not only metastatic breast cancer, that's HER2 positive, but also those women who have an early stage 
HER2 positive breast cancer would be uh, benefiting from this. And that's based on an analysis that was presented in 2005 and 2006. That's when different clinical trials, so one, two, three, four, five, all of them were going on around the same time, maybe one or two or three years uh, between one and the other. And they all were showing the same result that giving chemotherapy along with Herceptin or Trastuzumab would make women who have early stage breast cancer have less chance of the recurrence or the coming back of their cancer. So that's really big news and good news. And that's when it became ultimately available for all those women with early uh, HER2 positive breast cancer. But although that story is really good, there are still some patients with HER2 positive breast cancer treated with trastuzumab, then the, the cancer came back later on. So we know that ultimately some patients would develop some kind of resistance to um, the treatment. And, and we don't know what the, re what the reason for this is. It could be that the, the HER2 molecule becomes a uh, different shape, so it, uh, or maybe it transmits the signal within the cells differently, or it could be because it's getting help from other HER2 molecules, so it's HER2, HER1, HER3, so other uh, of the membrane, membrane proteins would come and help it to avoid the effect of Herceptin. So realizing this kind of resistance, researchers were able to look for other mechanisms and other molecules to help in the, the effect of, the, of Herceptin. And that's what they were working on between 2006 and 2012. So we're gonna go back to here. So Trastuzumab in 1998, in 2006, it became available for early stage breast cancer. And on the same time, there was this molecule called lapatinib, which I mentioned earlier, it killed or at least attacks that membrane from, from that protein from the inside of the membrane. And that's in 2006, 2007, that's when it became available for some patients with metastatic breast cancer. But the big news was later on in 2012, and you can see there were so many new developments that happened between 2012 and 2020. So, so HER2 tar tar targeted therapy with this tyrosine kinase inhibitor, uh, so this is lapatinib, so it works on the membrane from, uh, with, you know, from the inside. So the trastuzumab from outside, lapatinib from inside. This is an antibody. This is not an antibody. This is more like a molecule. So it's a pill that patients would take and the pill would go you know, in, the, in the bloodstream. It goes to the cancer cells and it would go inside the membrane and starts to affect the, the HER2 molecule from within. So it can be given along with chemotherapy. Uh, the chemotherapy drug is called capsidabine or Zloda as the brand name, uh, or can be given along with her Herceptin and both ways it can help. And that was all the, the second thing that was uh, available from 2006 till 2012. Why 2012? Because in 2012, there was another drug called pertuzumab, which is another antibody that was actually approved uh, based on a very important clinical trial. And we're gonna go over this. So what is pertuzumab? So I mentioned that Herceptin or trastuzumab works on one side of the HER2 molecule. So what pertuzumab would do, actually it would work on another uh, her or HER molecule. Uh, so basically the HER2 gets some help from HER3 and the researchers realized that. So what they did is they developed this antibody that would work against this process of the HER2 getting aid or help from HER3 and stops it. So basically you give trastuzumab, it blocks this process here. You give pertuzumab with it, it blocks this HER2, HER3 process here. So basically avoiding this help, and that's how it really works. So again, HER2, trastuzumab, and pertuzumab helps with the HER3 uh, molecule. So this clinical trial, uh, it's a very nice name called, called Cleopatra trial. So patients with metastatic HER2 positive breast cancer, they were randomized, so some of them got chemotherapy, along with trastuzumab or Herceptin, which is the standard of care, and the placebo, so a dummy 
uh, I, you know, IV medicine. And the other half took the same thing, chemotherapy with Herceptin and this drug, pertuzumab, that I just showed you how uh, it works. And they randomized them and they followed them. And what they found is that if you look here, the green curve, it shows you the patients who were able to live for a much many or many lo months longer without having the disease progress. Uh, and then if you look here on the right side, you can see that the same patients were able to actually live longer and they lived by at least 16 months longer. That's a significant change. So when I mentioned up to 56 months, so those patients who got the pertuzumab lived 56 months versus those who did not get it on that trial lived 40 months. So that's almost a 16 month increase in the survival advantage. And this is from 2012 and was updated later on in 2015. And this was definitely a game changer for patients with metastatic HER2 positive breast cancer. So 2001, Perceptin or Trastuzumab was a game changer in 2012. Pertuzumab added to trastuzumab and chemotherapy was a game changer. And we'll show you later on about something else that also has been a game changer in the last two years. So all this is really good news. So what about this other drug? I mentioned earlier something called antibody drug conjugate or ADC. Why is it called antibody drug conjugate? I'll show you in a bit why that name. And that became available in 2013. So 2012, 2013, a lot of changes, a lot of new improvements. And I think patients with metastatic HER2 positive breast cancer between 2012 and now have done much better than between 2001 and 2012, just because of the availability of different uh, treatment options. So what antibody drug conjugate means is, this is the same thing, so trastuzumab. So this is the antibody. What researchers did is they said, well, we're going to have this antibody. We know it attaches to the, the HER2 protein. What about, and we know it goes inside the cells. That's some of the mechanism of how it works. So how about if we attach to it some chemo molecules, very, very tiny chemo molecules. In these situations, the chemo molecules called DM1. So again, very small amount of chemo molecules. So basically think about it as the magic bullet. So the antibody comes, attaches itself to the uh, outer part of the HER2 uh, uh, protein, and then it gets sucked into the cell. Inside the cell, this chemo drug, the small molecule chemo drug, gets released inside the cell. You can see those orange dots getting released and actually starts to kill the cell from within. So of course, everybody was thinking this is a magical way, this is a magic bullet killing the cancer cells. And while it does work, it unfortunately wasn't the answer, okay? It's not the answer that it would last for a long time because unfortunately, cancer cells still are able to be smart and be smarter than the treatment and they can develop some way of being resistant to this drug. So this is the first study in 2013 that showed that if we give this antibody drug conjugate, it's TDM1, uh, the other name for it is called Ketsyla. Uh, if we give it and compare it to chemotherapy and lapatinib, the one from 2006, it actually shows improvement in survival. And you can see here how the curves are separate. The blue curve is the one that uh, is the new drug, the TDM1, the antibody drug conjugate. And you can see that they lived, um, you know, several months longer, at least six or seven months longer. So unfortunately, it's not the answer to everything because still there will be some resistance, but at least it was another option that's available for patients uh, with metastatic HER2 positive breast cancer. So here's in 2014, they, you know, so we have here trastuzumab, we have lapatinib, we have the pertuzumab and trastuzumab, we have the, the TDM1, the antibody drug conjugate, but you can see that it's slower for the early uh, stage breast cancer. So you can see a lot more happens for metastatic breast cancer as opposed to early stage breast cancer. It usually follows it in time. So in 2014, they did the same testing using the pertuzumab 
entezuzumab for early stage breast cancer, and they actually found that still it works for them. And it became available in 2014 up until 2017 for some women with early stage breast cancer. So that's really uh, was another game changer because those women with early stage breast cancer would live longer and have less likelihood of the cancer coming back because we added more drugs, more biologics to chemotherapy. So you can see here that for HER2 positive breast cancer, we give chemotherapy and anti-HER2 medicine. Uh, if it's hormone receptor positive and HER2 positive, we do the same thing. We give chemotherapy and HER2 targeted treatment along with endocrine therapy or ET. So that's hormonal treatment. So while it's good news for them that they can get more treatment, unfortunately, we still have to give chemotherapy. So this, the expense is really getting chemotherapy, but the outcomes are still a lot better than they were 20 years ago for those same patients. So I'm gonna just move on a little bit just to, to 2017 and tell you that there were a lot of studies being done at this time and they're ongoing till now saying, well, now we know that we can add more treatment and what else? We know that TDM1 was a really good drug. Could, you know, for those who have some kind of resistance, can we do something different uh, for them early on? So, uh, you know, so with that said, I just want to show you here that there are different drugs that got approved in 2017 and a lot of changes. And, uh, you know, I'm going to skip some of those slides because I think it's just too much of details. I mentioned already uh, all that. Uh, so the pertuzumab and taxane, so chemotherapy and trastuzumab, the TDM1, then we have the rapatinib, which going back, that was approved in 2006. We can also go back to Herceptin and other chemotherapy drugs. So multiple things that are available. So we still have, we're climbing. And, you know, here is in 2019. So this is an important clinical trial that looked at TDM1, that drug that was available from 2013. It took them several years to test for it, not in the metastatic breast cancer, but in the early stage breast cancer. So they gave patients with HER2 positive breast cancer, chemotherapy before surgery. At the time of surgery, many patients, anywhere from 40 to 60% achieved what we call complete response, meaning at the time of their surgery, there was no cancer to be found at the pathology. The pathologist looked at their slides and they couldn't see any cancer. However, the 40 to 60% would still have some cancer left behind. It's not completely melted with the chemotherapy and the HER2 treatment. So those patients were randomized. They said, well, the option is really standard of care, give them the Herceptin for the rest of the year, because that's what we've been doing for 16 years, 17 years. How about instead of giving them Herceptin, we give them that magic bullet drug, which is that Herceptin with the chemo molecule attached to it, TDM1, and compare and see if they would do any better. And that's what they did. And what they found is for those patients who had early on some kind of resistance, so again, those are patients with early stage breast cancer, not metastatic, got chemotherapy, then surgery. If the chemotherapy was not 100% effective, so there was some cancer left behind, they were given TDM1 instead of Herceptin. And you can see here that the outcomes are much better. Those patients who received TDM1 did better. They were less likely to have uh, the cancer come back. In fact, this an independent body of researchers who look at a clinical trial as it's being done. And there is something called interim analysis. So this data safety and monitoring board, when they convened in that first analysis, they said, actually, those results are too important that we have to stop patients from being enrolled and unblind them, tell them what they're getting. And for those patients who are not getting the TDM1, they should be getting TDM1 because the results are so impressive and that was a big game changer. So this is a major clinical trial. Uh, it has a very nice name, nice name called Catherine trial. 
it's an acronym for you know how they put the the wording for the clinical trial together uh and now this is the standard of care so patients with some you know uh breast cancer that at least lymph nodes are are uh, uh, involved early on, or the cancer is a little bit bigger than uh, 1.5 centimeter or la larger than one centimeter, they will be given chemotherapy ahead of time, ahead of surgery, then surgery. And if there is the cancer left behind at the time of, you know, not all of it has been killed by the chemotherapy and HER2 treatment, then those patients would receive TDM1. This is standard of care as of 2018, 2019. All right, so I think I mentioned all that already. And see, we are now in 2020 and 2021. So between 2020 and 2021, there has been more changes. And you can see here, just between 2019 and 2021, we added four new blocks to this uh, metastatic breast cancer uh, patient population. So what are those? So a lot of new things. So the first one is another antibody drug conjugate. I mentioned the TDM1, but meanwhile, you know, while the TDM1 had a few, but some uh, chemo molecules attached to it, researchers developed another one. It seems to be stronger because it has more chemotherapy, a little bit different type of chemotherapy attached to it, and more of those molecules attached to it. And it seemed to them that it might be the same, better, maybe not as effective uh, compared to TDM1. And obviously they needed to, to check it. So the first thing they did, they checked it alone and almost 76% of the patients who just got it had some kind of response. At least actually 76% had a response that is more than 20% uh, effective. So the FDA... Uh, approved this drug, even though it was not through a randomized clinical trial, just because of how effective this medication was to patients who've had at least two different types of treatment for their metastatic or two positive breast cancer. So that was very, very impressive. And that was in, the results were presented in December, 2019, and the approval was within weeks in early 2020. And we have been using this drug for the last year and a half. So they also uh, compared this drug, which is an antibody drug conjugate, to an, the other one, TDM1, just to see, is it similar? Is it better? Is it less effective? And those results were just presented in September 2021. So we're talking just about... Uh, seven weeks ago that these results were presented and they were patients who had received trastuzumab and pertuzumab. And, uh, you know, so, and uh, instead of giving them TDM1, some patients received this other antibody drug conjugate. It's called TDXD. I know there was really weird names, but that's how uh, they called them. Uh, the brand name for it is called NHER2. The other one is called Ketsila. And patients were randomized. So half the patients got TDM1, which is the standard of care. The other half, half got this other drug, which was, we know it's effective and has had impressive results. But now we're comparing one group to another receiving uh, the, you know, the, the medications. And you can see here, those were the results. And I think those results were even more impressive than many, many of the clinical trials. You can see that on average, patients who received TDM1 had uh, a 12 month rate of, uh, you know, six months versus the, those who received the other drug, 18 month. And that's on average, this is really significant. And there is a significant increase in the length of time where they, this drug put a pause on the progression of the disease. Those are impressive. We don't know how much longer uh, those patients are gonna live because the results are too, too recent that we don't even have that uh, data. And I think it could be another two or three years before we get that data. But for all of us in the breast cancer community, we know that instead of the Katsyla as being the second uh, line of treatment, this drug is now 
the, the second line of treatment. And because of how impressive the results are, uh, this, this drug is now being tested uh, to compare it to pertuzumab and adherceptin and chemotherapy is also being tested in early stages of breast cancer. So obviously we're gonna wait a couple of more years before we get, we get the results, but I think the results might be impressive just based on this uh, results that we just have seen uh, just about a month and a half ago. So with that said, there are other medications, again, targeting the molecule from the, the protein from inside the membrane. So this other drug called tucatinib and was just approved also about a year and a half ago. What was impressive about it, and I'm gonna show you, so those were patients who had metastatic HER2 positive breast cancer. Many of them had brain uh, metastatic disease. So disease that has gone to the brain. And they were given uh, this new drug to catenip. It's a small molecule, so it can cross into the brain and potentially not work outside, but also for those who have metastatic uh, HER2 positive breast cancer to the brain. And uh, what they found was that combining this to catenib with capecitabine, which is a chemo drug, and Herceptin, compared to dummy pill and trastuzumab and chemotherapy, patients lived longer, had a longer time with pause on their disease, and also this was applicable even to patients with metastatic breast cancer to the brain. So again, this is another game changer. And this is one of the first studies to really show this much of an improvement for those patients who had already had their cancer spread to their brain. So that's another option. So as we are looking at what we have on the shelf to give patients with metastatic breast cancer, we look to see their, their scans of the brain. If they have metastatic breast cancer to the brain, I might want to choose this regimen over something else just so that I can target that and maybe avoid uh, some of the different treatment, either surgery or radiation. So with this said, I think I gave you a you know, big overview over how we treated breast cancer over the years from uh, the HER2 positive breast cancer from 1998 till 2005, 2006, 2012, 2013, and over you know, 2019, where as you can see, but in the last two years, we've had major changes. And I think uh, our fight against this type of breast cancer is only going to get better in the next few years. And with this, I thank you for your time and we will be taking questions later on. Thank you again.